Hello everyone, Dr. Kevin Zadai with you, and I am so excited to be talking to the new Warrior Fellowship Tampa with Pastor Sixto and Susan. I'm so excited to be with you all, and I want to give you this message that the Lord has given to, to me to give to you for this new year and to everyone all over the world that's, that may be watching. This is the season. This is the new season that we're in. This is a season of an expansion. But before we can expand, we've got to understand our mission. And in order to get our mission, we've got to get it from our commander. And so I'm so thankful. I love you, Pastor Sixto and Susan. I thank you uh, for all that you've done to partner with us at Warrior Notes. I'm so glad that you've decided by the Lord's leading to join us. And so I'm speaking to all of you in Tampa right now and all over the world. But I want to, co I want to concentrate on the number one question that was asked all through the three years that we've been doing the YouTube channel. I went back through all three years, looked at all the comments, and the number one question was talking and asking about the secret place. They, they wanted me to talk more about the secret place. They also wanted me to uh, discuss how to get into that secret place and you know, what that all involves. And so uh, the Lord gave this to me in my heart. And then when I, I was all excited when I was going to get to speak to you. And so we're going to launch this new year of 2022 off. And uh, I just believe that the power of God is, is it's already present here. Uh, where I'm at and I'm ministering to you and I'm believing that it's going to be imparted to you right now. I, I want to start out with, with what God has, has spoken to me about the secret place. And then I'm going to tell you what he has planned for this year that we're in now, 2022. And all of you in Tampa, um, you, you're, you're part, big part of this. And so I want to define the secret place by showing you the scriptures. And there are a lot of scriptures. You, you might've thought it was just Psalms 91. And to tell you the truth, when I was in Bible college, that's what I thought too. And then as I started to investigate, I found that the Psalmist, David, and a couple other uh, individuals mentioned the secret place. So we're gonna get into that as well. So first of all, I'm going to open up with Exodus 33, and I'm going to be reading from the New Living Translation. It's very important. We're going to be doing a lot of scriptures during this teaching, and this is very important to define this because essentially what's happening is, is people are asking for things that they don't understand. And God is always wanting to answer our questions. But the thing of it is, is that He doesn't tell us to ask certain questions. He waits until we decide to ask. And so I'm going to tell you the questions that, that the Lord wants you to ask Him, and then He's going to give you instruction. And it's all in the Word. It's all there. In, um, in uh, Exodus 33, 12, we're going to start reading here. It says, uh, 33, 12 says, One day Moses said, to the Lord, you have been telling me, take these people up to the promised land, but you haven't told me whom you will send with me. You have told me I know you by name and I look favorably on you. If it is true that you look favorably on me, let me know your ways so that I may understand you and fully and continue to enjoy your favor. And remember that this nation is your very own people. Okay, there, there's a lot here, and I'm going to stop here. That's only two verses, and we still got a whole bunch more. But I, I wanted to start to discuss this with you, and I want you to take notes, because this is step by step. These are the principles to encounter the secret places, and this will get you not only your mission, but you'll be able to understand your commander, and who, is, who is God himself, and he's the one who gives you your mission and you need to report at this time, he's waiting for you to arrive at this secret place so he can meet with you and discuss the strategies he has for your life. Because we all need to get together in this year of 2022 and strategize, and we need to hear from God. So I want everyone all over the world that's associated with Warrior Notes to begin to do these steps so that we can all get on the same page together. The Holy Spirit is in all of us. And right here, Moses is writing about an encounter that he had up on the mountain because God said to him, um, he goes, take these people to the promised land. And he's reminding God that, you know, you told me to do this. He said, but you haven't told me who's going to send me. And I'm thinking, well, that's interesting because, you know, he's already had face to face encounters with God. And um, then I, I got to thinking about it. Well, he was at the at the burning bush and he said, well, who do I say sent me? Um, and, 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 he, and God says, tell him I am sent you. 
And that was the sacred, uh, holy name of God. I am was, was the, the, uh, the most high God, Yahweh. And when he said that, you know, he said that to the Pharisees, Jesus did. You know, every time that that name is, is said, the, the power of the Lord was present. So Moses is probably going back to the fact that, that uh, you know, God started this and he sent me to Egypt to uh, talk to Pharaoh and all these signs and wonders of the deliverance happened. But now we're in the desert and, you know, uh, I can tell the Lord, can, the, Lord's, the Lord was mad at the people. So Moses is saying, I, I, I can tell that he's mad at the people. So when he's talking to him, he's, he's, he's getting God to commit again to sending him. And this is very important is that as, uh, as you uh, encounter this secret place, it's because you're asking questions. And what you're asking is, Lord, what is your plan and your purpose? Not coming to him and telling him what your plan and purpose is. Going to him and saying, Lord, you need to send me. You need to tell me who you are and what, what you're doing. Okay, those are very important things that you need to tell God. And this is ground zero. This is where it all starts. This is where you have coordinates and you're located. So you, there's a coordinate where you are right now. You know, a GPS system could be able to locate where you're at right now, even within a couple of feet. Uh, on a map, you know, that we can, we can be that accurate. And so if that's the case, then God knows where you're at and he knows what chair you're sitting in right now um, in Tampa or wherever you are all over the world. And, and uh, Moses is saying, listen, you haven't told me who's going to send me or send with you. And, and, uh, and uh, see, he can tell that Mo Moses can tell that God's not going to go with them. He can tell that there's something wrong. And we, we know that for a fact because uh, God has already told Moses, these are stiff-necked people. I can't be among them. He even wanted to kill the whole generation and just make a new nation out of Moses, if you remember. Okay, but getting back into this, Mo Moses knows that, that he has to get God to commit or, or they're, they're in trouble. Okay, so that's the way it is with us. We have to get God to, to speak to our hearts by the word of God and, and send us, just like all the apostles were sent, all of the ministers of the gospel were sent. You know, they were assigned and given in a mission, and, and that mission was, was uh, they were called sent ones, you know, and that's what an apostle is, is a sent one. Goes to establish a work, a mission, and um, really essentially we're all, we're all to be those kind of people, even though I know there's a five-fold ministry of the church with the apostle, prophet, pastor, teacher, and evangelist. But what I'm talking about specifically is, is in your life, God wants to establish a relationship with you that he reveals who he is, and then he gives his personality, he gives you his desires, his, his, his uh, ways of doing things. His personality is his ways his pathways. Okay, so remember that. So he said, you've told me I know you by name. Okay, so that's good. God knows Moses' name and he, and he looks favorably on him. Well, that's good too. So Moses has found favor. And that's why it said, it said in the scriptures, if you read, it says, oh, everything's going well with you, Moses and me. It's those people. And so Moses knows there's a problem here. So he says, if it is true that you look favorably on me, and that you know me, then he said, let me know you. Let me know your ways. And this is what I saw the secret place was. When I had my visitation, when I had my encounter, I saw that the secret place is where you sit down with God and you reconcile with him if you need to. And then you start to talk about the intimate details and secrets of each other's heart. You sit and discuss the, uh, the destiny, the plan that God has. And you let him show you who you are and what your, what your uh, destiny is on the earth, as it has to do with what was pre-written about you in heaven. This is the absolute truth. Okay, so he knows, he knows that God looks favorably on him, but he says, I want to understand you. I want to know you and I want to know your ways I want to understand you more fully. Isn't that amazing? And see, this is the secret place. Whenever you do this, you can make it a pl any place you want. But when you lock yourself up 
and you sit there and you let God be God and you tell him, you know, I want to know you. I want to know your ways. I want to know what you like. I want to know what you don't like. I'm telling you, this is how you start your, your year out is you, you reconcile with God and you sit at his feet and you tell him, listen, you know, I want to know you, you and your ways. Okay. So he says, I want to continue to enjoy your favor. Okay. In other words, Moses knows that if he's mad at the people and God doesn't send him or go with him, that he could get out of favor, just like the people did. So, you know, I always think about this when somebody's upset or, or criticizing someone and they're saying bad things, you know, I always think, well, you know, eventually I'll probably be on that list too. If they're doing this with someone else, they're probably going to do it with, with about me too, you know, because, you know, there, where, where are the boundaries if, if you're going to criticize? And so Moses is probably thinking, you know, I can see that I don't understand what God likes and doesn't like, even though I'm learning. And so I, I better turn myself in because he's saying I have favor, but I don't really know his ways and I don't understand him. This is the number one problem with, that I, I have seen with Christians. And so they want to know where the secret place is and how to get there. And I'm telling you how to do it. This is the number one issue. And the problem is, is that people don't sit down and turn themselves into God. They don't say, listen, I don't know why you favor me, but you do. But I want you to go with me. And if you're not going to go with me, I'm not going to go. And I am going to know you. I'm going to know your ways. And you let God show you. And that's how I read scripture. I, I really literally uh, study the Bible all the time. I'm always studying the Bible. I'm always reading. But I'm not necessarily writing a book. Sometimes I'm not. Sometimes I'm not preparing for anything. What I'm doing is I'm letting the Holy Spirit teach me about my Father God. And what happens with that is intimacy. And when intimacy happens, then a whole bunch of things start to happen that have to do with the gospel, the gospel message. I start to be delivered. I start to be healed. I start to receive revelation. I start to have uh, jubilee. I start to... to uh, see poverty broken in my life and, and all kinds of issues with relationships. I start to see what's happening inside me expand, but then it starts working itself outward and to the visible where I'm seeing the manifestation of it going forth and it's starting to happen in others. This is the seed that was sown in me for in secret place. It was, it was in secret. Nobody knew about it. Um, maybe my wife did. She saw me studying or whatever, but I'm always asking the Holy Spirit to reveal the meaning of verses because I don't know everything. I'm always wanting the Holy Spirit to show me what, what the Bible is saying. And this is, is what Moses was doing. He was asking God, listen, I don't even know. I don't even know you or understand your ways. And I want to enjoy my favor that I have with you. And he, he's not going to find himself on the wrong side of God because God's already mad at the people. Okay, so remember that Moses also said this, these people, just remember they're your people too. So when, when Moses did that, what he was doing was he was including himself in the mission with the people. You see, because God was mad at them and he was wanting Moses just to continue on by himself. And Moses mentions this because this is what Jesus, Jesus, uh, when, when, I, when he appeared to me, he, was, he talked about Moses a lot. He loves Moses. And he told, he told me about Moses. And Moses was very, very, uh, very, very powerful individual that encountered Jesus. I mean, Moses knew Jesus. And he saw Jesus on the mountain. And it's interesting that, that, that Moses, he took all those people in there thinking that it was going to work out because God was with them. But when the people rebelled, that really hurt him. That hurt Moses. And he got in the flesh. He got hurt. He got offended. And so he started to do things that were in the flesh. And so God called him on it several times. And then when he struck the rock twice instead of speaking to it, it was because he was upset. He was angry and he struck the rock when he should have spoken to it. And that's why he didn't enter into the uh, promised land. Okay, but God, God knows that through Jesus Christ, God knows that Jesus Christ has suffered and taken the stripes upon his back so that now we can have access to all these things. 
and we don't have to work for it. We just have to make ourselves available. It's just like salvation. Once you heard the message, you received it. So remember this, it's more about receiving in this year of 2022, and it's more about making yourself available for revelation. And so the Lord replied, I personally will go with you, Moses, and I will give you rest, or the word there is shalom, and everything will be fine for you, okay? But he didn't say anything about the people. Of course, Moses picks up on this. He says, then, if you don't personally go with us, so he changes it back from you to us. So he's not just going to include himself in it. Because Jesus told me when I, when I had that encounter with him, he said, you know, Kevin, it's not about you. It's about the people that I send you to. And he said, um, you know, you're going back. And I didn't want to come back. But God sent Moses for the same thing, for the people. And so here... Moses grabs a hold of what is supposed to be the original will of God, which is what we have to do right now. We have to remember the intention for this nation, the intention for this time that we live in, the intention of the gospel being preached. And what, what, we're, what are we really originally supposed to do? Go back to, to your commander and read over the commands that he gave you. What was your assignment? What is your destination? You know, and this, this nation was supposed to go into the promised land from Egypt and Moses was supposed to take them in. And so Moses says, you're not going to, you're not going to leave us here in this place. He says, we're not going to go anywhere if you don't personally go with us. That's what he says. Okay. So he becomes an intercessor in knowing the fact that God has already revealed his will and that now he's reneging on it. It's, it's, it appears, but Moses is standing in the gap, and God knows exactly what he's doing here. He is revealing his plan to Moses, and he's reaffirming, and Moses is also getting God to recommit to sending Moses and to hear from his, his commander the commands that, he's, that he is going to fulfill, and that's what Moses gets out of him. He says, how will anyone know that you will look favorably on me, Moses says, and on your people, includes the people in there in that conversation, even though God doesn't, doesn't want to mention that. If you don't go with us, for your presence among us sets your people and me apart from all the people of the earth. Okay, so now Moses is reminding God of the big picture, which, you know, of course, God knows this. This is for Moses' benefit. Because, and, and this is what happens when we go in, we get into hardship. Moses was getting into hardship because the people were rebellious. You can see that God's plan was always for them to go in to that promised land. And it was about a 14 day journey. So why all this trouble? It's because of rebellion. If you look at what is happening, not only here, but then what is reiterated in the book of Hebrews concerning these scriptures here, God says that they, they fell in the desert because of their unbelief, because of, it was rebellion, and that they didn't enter into the rest. And so don't be like them. The book of Hebrews says, don't be like those people who didn't enter into the rest. And so this is, this is um, the plan that God has. He has set this nation apart, and he has called it his own. Okay, so Israel was supposed to go in and was supposed to be 14 days. It wasn't supposed to be 40 years and then another, uh, you know, group of years until they went in. You know, when Joshua, you know, you have a, you have a 40 years and those people fell in the desert. Then the new generation came up and Joshua took them in. And, you know, it, it still happened the way God wanted it, but it was not the timing. It was not the right timing. And I'm explaining this to you because if we would all just get into the secret place and turn ourselves in and, and talk to our commander and uh, tell him, listen, you know, I'm for the people. I'm for your mission and I, it's all about your people. And, you know, this is, this is the plan that you first instituted with me. Uh, you sent me to this area, you know, and we are going to uh, do this for this is we're going to do this together. And if you continue to talk to the Lord like that, like Moses is talking to him and saying, listen, you know, how will the world uh, know the difference? And, um, you know, Moses here is saying, listen, you know, all the people of the earth, they're watching. And, uh, you know, he even told God, we're not, um, you know, you're not going to kill this, 
these people because Pharaoh in Egypt will say that you took them out in the desert to kill them. You're gonna, your name will be uh, defamed. And so we, you cannot do that, Lord. That's what he was defending. Okay, so we have to do the same thing now. The world is watching the body of Christ, the, the church, the glorious church, the, the church of the living God, the, the, the church that the gates of hell can't prevail against, as Jesus Christ said. This, this a body of, of believers on the earth is, is maybe smaller than you thought now, but really it's, it's the true remnant. It's the true body, okay? She is being um, purified and, and being ironed out so there's no spots, no wrinkles. Everything's being readied for the wedding feast. And the people on the earth are going to have to see that there's a difference between us and them. And this was the biggest thing when I worked for the company that I worked for for many years is the people wanted to see the real thing. And they were criticizing because they said, you know, that, that it's the ineffectiveness of, of the Christianity or, you know, they were making all these comments. And I said, well, you know, I'm not participating in that that uh, criticism or that drought, as you talk about, or the hypocrisy, you know, they would be so critical of Christianity and, you know, the, my coworkers and things. And I would say, no, no, no. I said, you know, there is a true group of believers that, that are on a mission and they're being a, on assignment. They're being used by God in these days and they're walking in miracles and, and right, in, the, in the authority of the believer and, and seeing uh, the, the poor fed and taken care of and seeing um, uh, people get jobs and, and seeing people get healed and delivered of demons and seeing their sins forgiven and then them turning uh, into ministers of the gospel. You know, this, th this is what I would tell them. I said, you know, there, there is a real, you know, you shouldn't, you shouldn't uh, criticize everyone because there is a true church. Okay. So this is what Moses is, is reminding God. And this is what you have to tell God. You have to tell God, listen, you know, I want to be part of the remnant. I want to know you. And I want to be set apart so that everyone knows that, that you're with us, God. And um, everyone knows that you're with me. And, that, and I tell the Lord that all the time. I'm telling him that, you know, keep me in your favor because people are watching and I want to know you. I want to know you. Like, okay, so uh, in verse 15, Moses says, if you don't personally go with us, don't make us leave this place. How will anyone know that you look favorably upon me and on me and on your people? Okay, so this this is where this is where uh, I see people all the time. They want to give up because they don't see the Lord's favor. You see, if God is with you, it's really, really impossible for you not to have favor because God is bigger than you. And if he is functioning in, in all that he is, and you agree to function in all you are, I'm telling you, there won't be this discrepancy that favor will start to break through. And so I want to encourage you all is that this is what Moses did to get into the secret place. And see, what you don't know is I'm going to show you that what happens next when God visits Moses in the cleft of the rock. Uh, most scholars will tell you that Moses wrote Psalms 91 from the cleft of the rock, which is coming up right next. And so that is why I want to share this with you. These are step-by-step -step instructions for, for what we need to do as a, as a body of believers. And we're going to be effective because God's favor means that he is with us. And that if he is with us, his favor breaks forth, you know, because he, he's in agreement with us and we're in agreement with him. But if we don't humble ourselves and repent and, and turn ourselves in and ask for the commander to reveal himself to us and then give us commands, give us strategies, then, you know, we, what we have is, is, what we, is what we're enduring now in a lot of ways. You know, the, the church is supposed to be very effective in taking care of its own and also preaching the gospel to the world. And I believe that God's favor is for those who walk in and turn themselves in in the secret place. And God's waiting for us right now to do that. Okay, in... Um, in verse 17, the Lord replied to Moses, I will indeed do what you've asked, okay? He said, for I look favorably on you, and I know you by name, okay? So he's already said that before, and God agrees to do this for Moses, to, to, to make his request um, and make it good. Okay, Moses responded to him by saying this, then show me your glorious presence. 
Okay. Now this is where the second thing that, that, that seems to fall short is, is a, there's a separation here. There's a separation where people say that, you know, God's not favoring me and, you know, I've agreed to walk with him and I tell him I'm not going anywhere unless he goes with me. But yet you have to believe now that your commander and you are in this secret place and, and now it's time for strategies. And those strategies are going to break the power of the devil wherever you go. And that is the absolute truth. You know, I wouldn't be sitting here talking to you all and telling you this if I didn't know it. It's not just I, I'm trying to believe it. I know it. I know that favor breaks forth because it starts to work in your life first, but it's through intimacy. It's through the relationship of you and your commander where you turn yourself in. Okay, so I know that I'm repeating a lot of things over and over again, but it's just to reinforce what what is being what is being um, missed in the body of Christ? I believe right now, where the Spirit of the Lord is so strong in wanting us to grasp these truths. So Moses uh, says, "Show me your kabod," in Hebrew. Now, he's talking. Be previously, if you look, uh, God is saying, "My presence shall go with you." Okay, that word is is a different word than the word that's used for glory. Okay, so Moses throws this out. God's agreeing to answer his prayers, but then he just, he, yeah, Moses throws and adds something to it. I'm going to tell you why. Because uh, Moses noticed when he's talking to God, I mean, he's having conversations. It says in multiple scriptures that he, he spoke face to face with God. Okay, so we know that that happened. But when he talks about revealing the glory, the kabod, and this is, this is something that's a stronger word than the word presence. So obviously Moses, and here's the key, Moses sensed that God was holding back something from him. Moses suspected that there was more to God than what he was showing. He was, he was toning it down. He was tuning it down. And I know this to be true. And this is the way it's been. I feel this way every time I minister is I feel like for so long people have had that it toned down. You know, the message has been toned down. And for whatever reason, why it doesn't get out the way that, 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 that the patriarchs preached it and the way that Jesus preached it, I don't know. There might be many reasons why ministers tone it down. Okay. But the only thing that the devil understands is to have a laser sight on his chest. If he looks down and he's been targeted, that's the only thing he understands. He doesn't understand anything else. He's looking for a way out and a way to do something no matter what. No matter how tight it is, the devil is very persistent in his assignment to kill, steal, and destroy. Okay? So the only thing he understands is when he's got to stand down. Now, now the, the sight that I'm talking about is, is usually on a, on a rifle where they have a sight and it, it, it throws a, a, a target a laser to the target and it paints a mark that's, that's from a laser. So if you've ever watched movies and you've, you've seen people, they were real boisterous and talking and all of a sudden they look down and they see that little red dot moving around their chest and their heart area, all of a sudden now uh, they're, they're willing to uh, compromise and talk um, why? Because, because now they're targeted and that, that bullet essentially goes to that spot, that, that laser sight. It's sighted so that it, it's that accurate. Okay, so with, with you, and unless you nail the devil with the word of God, if, unless you, you, you are purely speaking the word of God to him, he, he doesn't think that he can lose. He thinks there's a way. So, until you nail him with the word of God, he's going to keep trying. But if you are persistent and you are, are, are uh, pinpoint accurate with how you do things and speak, by you're saying, well, this is what the Lord says. This is what the Lord said. This is what he told me to do. This is what he's doing. You know, when you start to prophesy that way, the, the devils just back off because they have no way of fighting that, okay? They're going to want to fight you like they did Adam and Eve. They're going to get them in their mind and try to reason it out what God did say and get 
them confused. And so that's what happened with Adam and Eve. So we know that's how he, he does these things. So you, you need to discern now that Moses knows that God is holding something back from him. And he says, I want to see your kabod. That's what it says in Hebrew. Your, he, and, and listen, that word, that the word, the glory, it's, it's, actually, it's actually talking about his ways. I want to know your ways. I want to know your personality. And this is what I saw is that the glory of God, what, it's the cloud of glory that comes forth from him. It hits you before you even get, get to him, but you experience him because it's so his, he's so powerful that his personality hits you before you even encounter him in, 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 within proximity. So you'll see a glory cloud. You'll see these, these, um, the, the pillar of fire. You'll see the glory cloud in meetings. You'll have uh, all kinds of uh, manifestations of, of this cloud. Uh, just like it was in the Old Testament. And in the New Testament, they encountered this too as well. Now, I'm telling you this because Moses was getting to the point that he was speaking to uh, God just a couple verses ago when he said, I want to know your ways. I want to know you and I want to understand your ways so I can stay in favor. You see, presence, the word presence is, is not in Hebrew. In Hebrew, there is no word for presence like that. The word that, that is used there is, is, is the word um, panayim. And it should be panai, just like Elohim is plural, it should be Elohi. So when God, God's uh, Elohim is mentioned, it's, it's plural, it, but it's used as a singular noun. So in other words, when, the, when uh, Moses referred to God at times, it was plural. But see, Moses had the revelation of the Trinity. He understood the Trinity, so he would write Elohim and not Elohi, which is singular. So God is, was written as plural, okay? Panaim is plural as well. So it should be Panai. Panai is the word for face. So God says, my face, my presence in, in English, but it says, my face shall go with you. But it's really, my faces shall go with you. It's plural. Panaim. Okay, so presence is the word panaim. Glory is the word kabod or kavod. Okay, so Moses is asking for something impossible because you can't see the face of God in his full glory and live. And this is what happened when, when I was in heaven. I couldn't look at the face of the Father in, in his full glory. I, I've never seen the Father's face, but I was allowed to look at Jesus' face. Okay, but Jesus at times, like during the Mount of Transfiguration, um, that glory was so glistening that they fell and they were blinded. Uh, Paul, who was Saul on the road to Damascus when he fell, you know, he was blinded by that light and by that glory. Okay, so Moses wants to know God more intimately and knows that he's holding back. And this is what I'm finding right now where we're at. This is the time where everyone everywhere should be seeking God and saying, Lord, I want to know you. I want to know your ways. I want to hear from you. You know, we're not going anywhere unless you send us and start to receive from your commander who you're getting to know intimately, because this is the case. You know, when I was in heaven, it is set up like military. It's, it's, it's like a, a huge amount of angels and everything is in order. Everything is run. I mean, think about it. He's just not running this earth. I mean, he's running the universe. He, he's he's uh, doing a lot of things that have to do with years from now that we don't even know about. So there is a command center in heaven. There is an amazing amount of things going on in heaven. And the, it's military style. In other words, all the angels have rank. There's all kinds of other beings that have rank besides angels. And then there's saints that are assigned to do things. And, and so we have here Moses asking God to show him his glory, to show him his glory, to show him his ways, to show him who he really is. So the Lord, um, the Lord uh, said, I, I will make all my goodness pass before you and I will call out my name Yahweh to you. For I will show mercy to anyone I choose, and I will show compassion to anyone 
that I choose. Okay, so before I go on, I have to explain this to you too. My Hebrew teacher who grew up in, in, in Israel, in Jerusalem, and um, he, he taught me that this in Hebrew right here, this whole section where God just he passes by Moses and he calls out, he says he's going to call out his name. He said in Hebrew, this is the long name of God. In other words, there are all different names for God. But he, the, a lot of the Hebrew scholars, and he said he was a Hebrew scholar, he said this, this particular um, passage is known as the long name of God. And so God is calling out his name, but it's really long because he's describing um, his personality. So Moses was asking to know God, and so now God is explaining this to him. Okay, so I'm telling you, within, within this, this particular uh, last couple of verses, and then when we go to uh, chapter 34, this will explain to you what's missing from Christianity right now. Because Jesus Christ was there on the mountain with Moses. And, and that's why when he was on the Mount Transfiguration, it just seemed normal for God to be talking, you know, Jesus to be talking to Moses and Elijah to be talking to, to Moses and to Jesus. It, it seemed normal. And um, they were all just talking and hanging out together because they were all part of, 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 of the culmination of what Jesus had come for. The law, Moses represented the law and uh, Elijah represented the prophets. So it was the law and the prophets and Jesus was standing here because he was a fulfillment of all this. But there was a strategy given on the mountain and, uh, and Moses was part of that. Moses was part of this amazing plan. So he said, I'm going to show mercy on who I show mercy. Now what he's really doing, he's, re he's revealing his personality. Okay, so this means, this is why, this is why, uh, uh, Christians aren't doing as well as they should be, and they, and they can right after this this message they can they can do a lot better because the Word of God is instructing us here. He's saying, "Listen, I'll tell you something about my personality. I'm going to announce myself right now. I'm going to announce my name. I'm going to tell you who I am." And and this is he says, "I'm going to come before you and I'm going to announce my name and I'm going to reveal who I am." And he starts talking in this. It's like a paragraph, but he says, "I'm going to show mercy to anyone I choose." Okay, well, well, see, that's just showing you something about God. That's why we're not supposed to judge. We're not supposed to judge. You know, and I'm just telling you that, you know, if you, if you judge yourself, you won't be judged with the world. But if you judge, you're going to be judged with the same uh, amount of judgment. So do you want that coming back? Because you might want to order your size because you're going to have to wear it. You're going to have to wear the size you order. Even though you're judging someone else, it, you're going to have to wear that. So make sure you order your size because it's, you're going to have to wear it. And that's why I don't judge people. I discern. I make discernments. And if I discern that something isn't correct, you know, it is God's word. It is God's ways. And it's him, he himself that judges. But I am supposed to make discernments. And as a spiritual person, I can make judgments about all things in, in as far as like being a, a spiritual person, knowing that something is of the flesh and of the world. You know, I can make a judgment about that, but I do not have the power to put somebody in hell to make a judgment against someone and say, well, you know, they're not saved or, you know, they're they're in a lot of trouble. I that is I'm not the judge. I am supposed to pray for everyone. I'm supposed to believe the best in everyone. I'm supposed to walk in love. And the judge, who is God himself, is supposed to do that. So here, God is saying, listen, I'm, I can choose to favor and give mercy to anybody I want. And I can show compassion to anyone I choose. So let's just get that straight, Moses, right off the bat, is I can do whatever I want. And this doesn't go over well with with was with, with religious people because they put God in a box and they think okay this is the way God is but it's not true if you read the bible God can still do whatever he wants he just doesn't go against himself he doesn't go against his word he's not a man that he should lie so he doesn't go against what he's already established and said because he'd be going against himself but here he says I'm going to do what I want to do, and I'm going to show mercy to who I want to, and I'm going to have compassion on whoever I want to. He said, okay, I'm going to walk by you, and this is verse 20, he says, but 
don't look directly into my face. Okay? No, he's talking to him right now, but he's, he's, he's going to come by with his full glory, and it's going to be coming out of his face. And we know this happened because of what happened to Moses afterwards. His face started to glow. And he, it says that in the Hebrew, he had shafts of light coming from his face, and he was fearsome to look upon, and the people were afraid of him when he came down. So we know that, that Moses got the same thing happening to him. Okay, because no one's going to be able to look at my face and live. So he said, don't look at my face. Okay, the Lord continued, look, stand near me on this rock. And as my glorious presence passes by, I will hide you in the crevice of the rock and cover you with my hand until I have passed by. Okay, so there was a place, he said, come and stand by me on this rock, is what it says literally. Okay, so God says that. And then he said, when I come by my full glory, I'm going to put you in the crevice. I'm going to put you in a crack in the cleft of the rock and put my hand over you to protect you as I pass by. And then you can look at my, my back parts. And that would be where the face wasn't showing. His face wasn't showing the glory that was coming out there. And I know this to be true because when I was in heaven, I did get to see uh, parts of, of the father up until, uh, you know, his just up until his chest about to hear. And, you know, I wasn't allowed to see anything else. And to tell you the truth, um, you know, I, it was so bright. I, I don't say that I couldn't have seen the face of the father if I would have looked, but uh, Jesus would not allow me to. He actually literally came and stood in front of me to block me or, or he leaned forward to, to, to block me from looking at his face. He knew what I was about to do. And he told me, you can't see the father's face and live. You know, in other words, my body couldn't take, take me back, you know, and my spirit wouldn't be able to come back to my body because my, once you see the father, um, you know, you, you are, you are in heaven to stay. You know, if you've seen the face of God, um, you're in heaven to stay. And I, I've never seen the face of God. I've seen the face of Jesus. And um, many others have seen him, him too as well. Just not, just, just not a, a couple, but many people have seen the face of Jesus. Okay, so he removed his hand and he let him uh, see him from behind. Okay, now in Exodus 34, like I promised you, verse 5, it says, Then the Lord came down in a cloud and stood there with him, and he called out his name, which is Yahweh, and the Lord passed in front of Moses, calling out, when Yahweh, the Lord, the God of compassion and mercy, I am slow to anger. So, okay, so we already have the first two, compassion and mercy. Okay, now he says, I'm slow to anger. So he doesn't get angry quickly. These are all very important things for you to know in entering into this place, this uh, secret place slow to anger and filled with unfailing love and faithfulness. So he's faithful. He has unfailing love. Um, he says, I lavish unfailing love to a thousand generations. Okay. So if you calculate how many generations there have been, there hasn't even been that many, according to, to most uh, scholars and statisticians, that there hasn't even been that many generations yet. Okay. So he says this. He says that he can lavish on people. For a thousand generations. Okay. He says, I forgive iniquity, which is twisting. Is that, iniquity is twisted. It's like what was found in, in the devil himself. He was twisted. Um, rebellion, he forgives rebellion and sin. But he says, I do not excuse the guilty. Now, a lot of people uh, don't understand that, but see, you have, to under, uh, you have to know that God is saying here, I love all the generations up to a thousand generations, which you know, we haven't surpassed yet. So he can love everyone, but he doesn't excuse people that are guilty. So he's going to punish the sins that he's going to lay the sins of the parents on their children, their grandchildren, it says, and the entire family is going to be affected. And that's what it literally says in a New Living Translation. Even the children to, into their third and fourth generations. Okay, so what, what people are encountering now is other generations who have not, um, have not pled guilty to God and asked for forgiveness. And so he forgives everyone in loving kindness. He forgives. 
but you have to come to him and turn yourself in. And so what happens is, is what we see is generations that have not done this and then they have children and then we end up being born and not knowing why we have the trouble we have in the location we, we have it in. And we don't understand this is that God is saying this, that he doesn't let off the guilty. He's what he's saying is, is that everyone is loved by me for a thousand generations. I, I, I have an unfailing love, but you need to come to me and reconcile with me. And so even the children of third or fourth generations, they suffer the sins of their, their, their uh, forefathers. And this is where you get into curses and generational things going on. And that's where the demonic follows that. They get excited when, when things are cursed because the, they have permission to hand that off to the next generation. And so um, you'll see these handoffs with physical things and all kinds of, of, of sinful acts that will appear in every generation as though something is following the generations. And it, it is because it is. It's, it is happening. Okay, so Moses threw himself on the ground when he heard all this and he worshiped and he said, Lord, if it's true that I have found favor with you, then please travel with us. See, so now he knows this is, this is the God of the universe and he's reassured now that, you know, we need you with us or we're in a lot of trouble. Yes, this is a stubborn, he, is, he starts to intercede, These, this is a stubborn and rebellious people, but please forgive our iniquity and our sins, claim us as your own special possession. Okay, so this is what we should be doing right now. We should be doing this for the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. We should be standing up in intercession right now for the body of Christ and praying and interceding that God would have mercy and that he would forgive and that he would be with us and, and that he would reveal himself to the people and say, Lord, you know, we're, we, we have rebellious among us. And, you know, you do this in stages. You do this for, for the body of Christ. You do this for, your, for your, uh, the local body. And then you do it for the, uh, the united corporate body all over the world. But then you can do it for each nation that there would be leadership that would be raised up in order to do the Lord's heart. Because if not, then it's not going to be done. And that is what has happened in, in this nation. It was because we defaulted back to, um, to uh, the ungodly ways because there wasn't, the, the, there wasn't enough people that were supporting in prayer and standing up. And now, now that this has all happened, this is, this is becoming evident that you know, the church needs to step up and start to pray. And the warnings did go out for, for many years for the church to start to pray and intercede. And you know, God is not mocked. A man will reap what he sows. And so this is not God's fault. But see, it wasn't, it wasn't necessarily Moses' fault either. Moses was just doing what he was told, but the people were rebellious and stubborn. And so for you individually now, all of you need to just make a decision right now as you're watching this is that, listen, I'm just going to turn myself in so that I can stay in the favor of the Lord and I'm going to get to know the, the Lord in an intimate way. And then I'm going to let him counsel me and tell me the secret strategies of what he's doing, like he did with Moses. He, he said this, he said this, um, uh, Moses and God had this agreement. He said, the Lord listened and said, I'm making a covenant with you in the presence of all your people. This is in verse 10 of, of chapter 34. He says, I will perform miracles that you have never been, that have never been performed anywhere on the earth. Okay. And a lot of people, um, maybe some of you don't even know this verse is in the Bible, but after all this experience that Moses had in the cleft of the rock and he got God's attention, he fell down and worshiped him. And this is what the Lord said, I'm going to listen to you. He said, I'm going to make a covenant with you right now in the presence of all your people. And I'm going to perform miracles that have never been performed anywhere in all the earth or in any nation. All the people around you will see the power of the Lord, the awesome power I will display for you. Okay, so this is the message for 2022. This is the message for all of you 
in Tampa and over all over the world, anyone is watching, you know, all the warrior fellowships that are going to be developed and established all over the world. We're all going to see God working with us and he's going to do miracles that no one has ever seen before. And it's all because God made a covenant with us. But it's the secret place. It's the meeting place. It's the hiding place. So now let's let's go into this uh, stage two of this. And I'm going to read Psalms 91, which you all really know pretty well, I'm sure. And I'm not going to focus a lot on Psalms 91 because you already know all that. I'm going to go to another um, uh, verses, verse section in uh, Psalms 36, and where it talks about the secret place. Because see, Psalms 91 is written by Moses. So now when I read this, I want you to think about Moses being in the cleft of the rock because Moses, it's confirmed that he did write Psalms 91. And um, Psalms 36, which we're going to read, is, was written by David. Okay, so Psalms 91, now that you're seeing Moses in the cleft of the rock and he falls down after God passes by him, and he's just, he's just, he's undone. Okay, this is what he says. When you abide in the shadow of Shaddai, you are hidden in the strength of God Most High. Okay, so he just, he just encountered the shadow of, of, of Almighty God. He just literally had God walk by him and he fell. Okay. He's the hope that holds me and the stronghold to shelter me. The only God for me and my great confidence. Yeah, you can tell that he's talking from his experience that he just had. Okay. Verse three, he will rescue you from every hidden trap of the enemy and he will protect you from false accusation and any, any deadly curse. Okay, so Moses had this revelation that, oh my gosh, if, you, if you're in the shadow of the Most High, like I just, I just encountered, none of these things are going to happen to you. And people aren't going to be able to even accuse you falsely. And there's not going to be any deadly curse that's going to be able to operate because you're in the shadow of the Most High. Okay, so this is all for you. This is why every Christian needs to appear before the Lord in the secret place. And just I just essentially stay there all the time. And, and this is how you become effective. You, you get lost. You get lost in His glory. And He becomes your purpose. He becomes your strategy. He becomes your very words. He becomes everything. You give yourself over as though Christ is doing his ministry through you. This is how, this is the secret to where we're going this year. Okay, so his massive arms, verse four, are wrapped around you. Okay, now if you remember, God stuck his hand out, his arm out, and protected Moses, protecting him. Um, it says, wrapped around you, protecting you. You can run under his covering of majesty and hide. Okay, so that's what he was doing. His arms of faithfulness are a shield keeping you from harm. For you will never worry about an attack of demonic forces at night, nor have a fear, uh, uh, fear of, a, of a spirit of darkness coming against you. Don't fear a thing. Okay, so obviously Moses is talking about this amazing encounter he just had as he wrote Psalms 91. Whether by night or by day, demonic danger will not trouble you, nor will the powers of the evil one be launched against you, even in a time of disaster, with thousands and thousands being killed, okay, you will remain unscathed and unharmed, period. Okay, so Moses had this, this experience, and he knew that no disease, nothing, could even survive around that area where he was with God. He had that and he had that encounter and he's writing from that and that is now our scripture that we can believe for in in this day. So that is why we 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 can believe that these diseases and and these things that are coming at at humanity we can believe as the remnant as the body of Christ we can believe that we're protected according to Psalms 91. And we just read that there in verses five and six. Okay, in verse seven, it says, even in a time of disaster with thousands being killed, it, you will remain unscathed. So that means that even though thousands have fallen and, and have died, it's not gonna come near you. And this is, this is the case. You, you need to trust and believe it. This is the best insurance policy that, that you can have. Okay, so verse eight says, you will be a spectator as the wicked perish in judgment. 
for they will be paid back for all they have done. Uh, verse 9 and 10 says, When we live our lives within the shadow of the God Most High, our secret hiding place, we will always be shielded from harm. How then could evil even prevail against us or disease infect us? Okay, so I want to emphasize that he's calling the shadow here of the Most High that he encountered in the cleft of the rock by asking God to show him his glory. He's calling that his secret hiding place. And he says, he says, we're always going to be shielded in that secret place. So this is, this is where you all are supposed to live. We're all supposed to live there. We're never supposed to leave. We're always supposed to be in God's favor, in his glory. And Jesus said this in, in uh, John 17. He said, Father, share with them the same glory that me and you shared before the universes were lit up. He said, share with them that they may be in unity as we are one. Let them be one. He also said, Lord, you love the, them just as much as you love me. So he said, reveal this love to, to them. So he said all those three things it, to the disciples and to anyone who believes from thereafter in John 17, he said, they're going to have that same love, that same unity, and the same glory. Okay, so here, this is Moses encountering this, and he's encountering all this protection, and he realizes that disease can't live in what he just encountered. Uh, he said there's no demonic forces that could even come near that rock as he stood on it with the, with the Lord. Okay, but it tops it off with this. Verse 11, it essentially starts the whole thing over again. The conversation almost goes at a deeper level in a repeat mode, but it's, it adds the angels in there first in verse 11, and then it starts to go even deeper now. So it's like a second stage of the secret place. So this is now is phase two, second phase of the, of the secret place, where he, Moses now adds about God sending his angels. And it says, it says in, um, in, the, in the Aramaic, it says, with special orders, to protect you wherever you go, defending you from all harm. So the angels are actually on special orders. They're special forces. And this is literally what it means. Okay, so if you walk in a trap, they're going to be there for you and keep you from stumbling. Verse 13, you'll even walk unharmed among the fierce powers of darkness trampling every one of them beneath your feet. So you're going to trample on serpents and scorpions. And this is what some of the translations say. And it's interesting because this is uh, Jesus is talking about this in Luke when he's talking about you're going to have power over all the enemy and trample on serpents and scorpions. He's literally, uh, he's literally quoting um, this verse in Psalm 91 that Moses wrote. So in verse 14 it says, For here's what the Lord has spoken to me. Because you have loved me, and you've delighted in me and have made, uh, have been made, um, have been a loyal, a loyal, um, you've been loyal to my name. I will greatly protect you. Okay, so now it's just going to another phase. Now it's going to be an intimate protection. I will answer you when you cry for help every time you pray. Okay, so there isn't a guarantee that when you call out to God, he's going to answer you every time you pray. It's right here in the Bible. So you cannot back off from this. And see, we need to be the standard on this earth by using the Word of God as establishing our boundaries. And then wherever we go, we say, no, 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 no. This is our instructions from the secret place right here. Um, nothing's going to touch us. And um, nothing's going to bring any harm to us. No disease is going to touch us. Even if, if a, a thousands fall by, right by us, it's not going to come near us. It says you're going to trample on serpents and scorpions. And he says, I'm going to protect you because you delighted in me. Okay, I will answer you when you cry out. And you will feel my presence in your time of trouble. I will deliver you and bring you honor. I will satisfy you with a full life and with, and with all that I do. For you will enjoy the fullness of my salvation. Now, what's so interesting is, is in Hebrew, right here in this last verse where I just read in verse 16, it says, you will enjoy the fullness of my salvation. Literally, right there in Hebrew is the name Jesus. It's literally, Jesus' name means salvation. So it says, you will enjoy the fullness of my Yeshua. It says it right there. 
So right there, God is prophesying his son. And Moses is literally encountering Jesus on the mountain. And so all of this is culminating right now at the, at the end of this age where we're at. You know, most of those people in the time of Jesus, they thought he was going to take over and establish himself as king over Jerusalem. And even Peter, James and John, when they were on the Mount of Transfiguration, Peter thought, you know, this is a permanent thing, so we're going to build some shelters here. And they didn't discern that that uh, it, it wasn't time for the culmination of the ages yet. And now, now at, at this time, you know, at the end of this age, where we're at right now, I mean, thousands of years later, 2,000 years later after the Mount of Transfiguration, we can see that we are coming closer and closer to that day when Jesus is going to come back. But we're going to enjoy the fullness of Jesus in these last days. And this is the end of Psalms 91. Okay, so now that um, I've set all this up and I'm, I'm, I'm just believing that you're uh, getting this and taking notes, we, I believe the Holy Spirit is helping you to stay with me on this because it's so important. Uh, this message is being launched all over the world, but it's being launched right, right to you in, in, um, in the Tampa uh, Warrior Notes Fellowship. And we, we love you and we love every believer all over the world. We, we love the unsaved. But for those who have ears to hear, that's how I'm going to preach. I'm going to preach, but those who can hear and understand, then those they will accept it. And those will be the remnant. Those will be the ones that will come alongside and help. So in Psalms 36, just to tie some of this up, but you, O Lord, this is Psalms 36, 5 in uh, the living, in the um, in the New Living Translation. But you, O Lord, your mercy seat love is limitless. And also, this is the Passion Translation. I, I, I made a mistake there. I am, I'm uh, talking from the Passion Translation here in verse 5 of Psalm 36. But you, O Lord, your mercy seat love is limitless. Reaching higher than the highest heavens, your great faithfulness is infinite, stretching over the whole earth. Your righteousness is unmovable, just like the mighty mountains. Your judgments are as full of wisdom as the oceans are full of water. Wow, that's amazing. So the, your tender care and kindness leave no one forgotten, not a man or even a mouse. Verse 7, O oh God, your, how extravagant is your cherishing love. All mankind can find a hiding place under the shadow of your wings. Okay, see, so this is the secret place again. David is talking about what Moses was talking about, and he's referring to it here again. So this is the reference that we, we find in Psalms 91, but this is in, in Psalms 36, is that he's, he's finding the refuge in a hiding place that's under his wings or the shadow. And of course, we know that in heaven that there are cherubim covering God, um, cherubim on each side of him with very big wings, and they cover God. So there is a, it just looks just like the mercy seat on the Ark of the Covenant. So you have these angels that cover God. God sits on the mercy seat, and that's what this language here, you notice that Moses and David, they're, they're mentioning the mercy seat and the mercy. And it's because in heaven is the true, and the, the angels that, that cover him are cherubims. So it's two cherubs, one on each side. They have these big wings, and they actually cover him, and they cover his face. So when the glory comes from God out, it, it doesn't hit everything because of the wings. So if you're, if you're right there in the shadow of the wings of the cherubim, you'll, you'll have a lesser amount, even though there's really no shadows in heaven, but that glory cloud, that glory that's coming out from his face, is, it's protecting God. Those wings of the cherubim are protecting him, and they're protecting everyone else around. So this is where you get the shadow and the wings, because God doesn't have wings. I mean, he, he's, he, he has, he's in the form of a man, even though he's not a man. Jesus is in, the, is, is in a man's body, but the Father has a body, and we can pick out all the different parts that, that God has, just that they're mentioned in the Bible, and he is just like uh, a man. He has got hands, he's got legs, he's got 
uh, a face and, and he sees and he hears. So he made man in his image. So we kind of know what the form of God would be because even though we're fallen, we can see that we're still made in his image and that we can, we can kind of figure that out. Okay, so you're, you're, uh, you're seeing here David refer to this hiding place again. And this is what he says. He says, I'm cherishing your, your love. And he wishes that all that mankind would find this hiding place, this secret place under the shadow of your wings. Okay? So this is, this is uh, answering a lot of questions uh, that I've received over the last few years about the secret place and how important it is. Now, now that we're, we're there with David and he's right there under the shadow uh, just in the same situation that Moses was, it says this in verse 8, all may drink of, of the anointing from the abundance of your house. That's what it says. Okay, so we're still right there, and this is what's happening. Another benefit. I'm going to drink of that anointing. I'm drinking of it right now. It's full. It's an abundance in his house. Okay, all may drink their fill from the rivers of Eden. Can you imagine what the rivers of Eden were? I mean, I've seen the river of life. I know what that looks like. And I'm telling you, that was the most beautiful, pure water I've ever seen. I can't imagine drinking from the rivers of life in, that were in Eden and drinking of the abundance of the oil, the anointing oil. It says here, the fountain of life flows from you to satisfy me. In your light of holiness, we receive the light of revelation. Okay, so now he's saying from that glory, from those beams of light that are coming forth, that that we receive that, that from that light is, is a holiness and that from that holiness, we receive the light of revelation. So it's that separateness of God, that holiness that we encounter. It's just kind of like, um, it feels like when you, you, you're close to something that's hot and it's uh, a hot fire or something, you can feel the heat hitting your face and that's how it feels in the presence of God. Um, keep pouring out your unfailing love, this is verse 10, on those who are near you, okay? Very important because we're still talking about those who make the most high their dwelling place, not visiting there. They're making it their dwelling place. Um, this is the qualification. It says, release more, more blessings on those who are loyal to you, those who are near you, okay? So this, this, is, uh, this, this is like... Uh, a, 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 amazing amount of information I know. I'm just going to keep on going for a little bit longer because I have I have so much I'm not going to be able to cover. But there is there are many more um, psalms that mention the secret place and the hiding place, and there's a private place that that the Lord calls us to. And um, the, the, in Psalms 25, I'll just read a, a small portion of it, starting with verse 10. Uh, and I, you can read the whole ch uh, chapter of Psalm 25, but verse 10 says, "Is loving are all your ways, Yahweh, loving and faithful for those who keep His covenant." Okay, that sounds familiar. That sounds like what Moses said, and what he heard God say, and also what David says. Okay, for the honor of your name, Yahweh, never count my many sins and forgive them all. Lift their burden off of my life. Those who live in holy fear of Yahweh you will show them the right path to take, okay? So this is where guidance comes in. This is like when you visit this place, you're gonna walk right. You're gonna know what's, what you're supposed to do. Um, I know that God already has my path prepared for me, and I'm just gonna stay with Him. I'm gonna stay in, in, in that. Okay, verse 13 says, then prosperity and favor will be your portion. So these people that fear Yahweh, Prosperity and favor will be their portion, and their descendants will inherit the earth. Okay? So that was verse 13 of chapter 25 of Psalms. Okay, so 14 says, There's a private place reserved for the devoted lovers of Yahweh, where they can sit near Him and receive the revelation secrets of His promises. Wow. Okay, so that is what I wanted to share with you in Psalm 20, uh, 25. And that last one part, that last verse was 14. And that just tells it all. It's talking about the private place. It's the secret place. And this has uh, been well-defined, I believe now, uh, for everyone who had questions about it. And um, 
I want to continue on with Psalms 31 real quickly here. And uh, Psalms 31, it, it's just a, a, a small portion, verses 19 and 20. Uh, it says, Lord, how wonderful you are. You have stored up so many good things for us, like treasure chests heaped up and spilling over with blessings. All who, those who honor and worship you, everyone who knows you and what you can do for those who turn and hide themselves in you. Okay, so it's talking about the hiding place or the secret place. Um, verse 20, so hide all your beloved ones in the sheltered secret place before your face. Overshadow them with your glory presence, same wording as Moses used. Keep them for, from all accusations and brutal insults. Tuck them safely away in the tabernacle, tabernacle where you dwell. This is amazing. It, it's, it's, uh, it just, uh, to me, if I would have known this as a young Christian, I would have uh, got, excelled so much quicker and, and I would have escaped a lot more than what I have just by knowing these things. And I want to continue to share with you, if you'll stick with me here in, in Psalms 32, it says, this is what I've learned through it all. Um, and this is, uh, I believe, uh, I'm looking at verse 6, verse 6 of 32. This is what I've learned through it all. All believers should confess their sins to God. Do it every time God has uncovered you in the time of exposing. For if you do this, you, when sudden storms of life overwhelm you, you'll be kept safe. Verse 7, Lord, you are my secret hiding place, protecting me from all troubles, all those troubles, surrounding me with songs of gladness, your joyous shouts of, re of rescue release, my breakthrough. Okay, so uh, I, c I can continue on with this. He continues to say, um, I will stay close to you. The Lord is saying, I will stay close to you instructing and guiding you along the pathway of your life. I will advise you along the way, and you will lead forth with my eyes as your guide. So don't make it difficult. Don't be stubborn. When I take you where you've not been before, don't make me tug you and pull you along. Just come with me. So I, I want to add that to that. And that is uh, in, in uh, verses 8 and 9. And uh, I know that I know that uh, it's been a lot of scripture verses, and I, I, I just want to reiterate that, that uh, God has defined the place that he lives. And he showed this to Moses. He showed this to David. He showed this to the disciples, uh, Peter, James, and John, because Jesus went to the Mount Transfiguration and was, was transfigured before them into the pre-existent Christ, the pre-existent uh, Son of God that was before time began. You know, the Trinity existed. Okay, so Peter, James, and John, they got to see this, but they didn't understand him that way. They saw him as a teacher, as a, uh, uh, a rabbi, you know. So they were, they were saying things like, you know, we know that you're the Christ, the Son of the living God, but I don't think they really realized that this, this person is before them, is clothed in flesh, but used to be, seated in a throne in eternity, uh, pre-existent, before, before the world began. And, and uh, it wasn't until John 17 that they, started, when they heard this, that Jesus said, you know, uh, show them the glory that me and you share before the universes were lit up, is what one translation says. So I want to encourage you, in the time that we have here on this earth, you know, our lives are so important. We're so valued by God that we've been trusted to be here on the earth at the time we are. We, we are. And you can see this in, in Acts chapter 1, as well as in Acts chapter 17, where, well, we were instructed that God knows the times and the seasons, and that He even knows the, the people that would be alive on the earth in certain places at certain times. And this is the instruction that we received uh, from the, the apostles in the book of Acts, about chapter 1 and verse 17, is that, is that truth, okay? So that means that we have been chosen at this time to be where we're at and doing what we're doing. But it is really more up to us to be like Moses and almost be nosy and say, listen, you know, you haven't, you haven't really told me everything. You know, you, you haven't uh, shown me some things about you. I don't understand everything about you. Why don't you tell me some things about yourself? And um, then 
then um, God starts to reveal himself to us. That's when transformation happens. That's when we start to make a difference. I know this to be true. It all has to do with revelation. And most people don't want to pay the price for revelation because you're going to have to turn yourself in. And you're going to have to sit with the Word of God before you. You're going to have to be prayed up. You might have to give some things up in order to, to be in the place that you need to be. And, and God uh, it deals with each individual differently. But I know for me the cost was great. It was so great that there's many times where I told him it was too great. And my life has not been something where I got to do what I wanted to do. It's, it's actually never been that way. I've never felt like I really get to do what I want to do. And yet now I get to do what I want to do because it's what he wants me to do. And me and him have come to an agreement and I'm in that sweet spot with the gifting of God, just like I want you to be in that sweet spot with the gifting of God for you. So the power of God is so strong right now. And I, I sense that the, the secret place, you know, I when I was in heaven, I got to go into a room that was the very uh, heart of God, the Father. Um, it, was a, it was a sacred room that I walked into and it was the room of full acceptance. It was the, the, the room where I was completely loved and accepted. And I have never felt anything like that except for in that room. And then one day when I was telling my wife, I was telling my wife about it just a couple years ago. I was telling her that, you know, I just wish that you could experience that room, you know. And um, all of a sudden, the room came into our house and it stayed for a, like a, I, almost a week, four days, I think. And um, we just wept and we could hardly walk and we didn't tell anybody. And then for weeks and weeks and weeks, it was still in our house, but, but it just never left. And now uh, people want to come to our house and just stay there, but they don't know this story. You know, so I, I know that I felt that, that love of the Father, that full acceptance. And I know that most of you, you, you know, most of us don't have that revelation of being fully accepted by our Father. And, you know, this is how Satan designed to keep everybody out of of getting of, of getting and receiving the Lord Jesus Christ in in this rejection mode where they feel like God is doing all these terrible things and he's not he's not doing any of these terrible things this is all consequence of people's sin and rebellion and God is is has not is not doing these terrible things this is a result of the fall it's a broken world but I want to pray with you and I want to impart to you because that this is this is my ministry in my life. My life and my ministry is in the secret place. And I just felt like this is the message that I was to, uh, to launch 2022 with, is that I can't hold back any longer. You know, if you don't have a personal relationship with Jesus, then you're not going to have a public relationship um, with anybody else that, that's going to be effective to me. To me, I see, you know, all kinds of people manipulating and they're very successful. But I also see people that are genuinely, um, they are blood bought uh, people of the Lord and they do the Spirit's bidding. And I see that those people, they, they do not fail. They always come out on top. And that's what I want for you because that's what God wants for you. But we have to go by the pattern that's in the Word of God. And Moses turned himself in. He said, you know what? If you don't go with us, we're done. We're done. In fact, we're not going if you don't go. And so let's get this straight right now. And so if you go over this and watch this over and over again, there's such an impartation on it. But this is ministry. Ministry starts in this secret place. Ministry starts with your relationship with the Lord. And the Lord, Lord told me that his ministry was actually the relationship he had with the Father. He said, I, did, I didn't do anything unless the Father told me to. He said, I didn't even talk unless he told me to talk. He gave me the words. And so I know that that's what ministry is supposed to be about. It's a Father's words coming through our lips as children. We're supposed to be imitators of God as dearly loved children. So Ephesians chapter 5 is still in the Bible, chapter 5, verse 1. We're to be imitators of God as dearly loved children. So we're children of a God who loves us and you are valued. So right now, I just want you to receive the acceptance. So Father, I just thank you for the power of deliverance right now as it goes out throughout the service right now, everybody watching all over. Lord, I just speak deliverance. I just thank you, Lord. You're just uh, flowing by your spirit right now. 
and dumping um, that acceptance, the spirit of acceptance, the spirit of adoption on everyone. Right now, Father, the, the impartation, the move of God has started. And Father, I know that right now that your spirit is already started all over the world. I thank you we're experiencing that love and that rejection is going in Jesus' name and trauma is going in Jesus' name. Full acceptance is being received by all your people right now. We love you, Father, and we thank you that you're going to show us your glory and you showed us Jesus Christ. He is your glory. He is your answer for sin. He is uh, your answer, Lord, for all the things. We're no longer lost, Lord, we're found. And I thank you, Lord God, as you locate everybody right now, you know where everyone is, that you will meet with them and you will reveal yourself to them in a mighty, mighty way this year. And that, Lord, that you're going to explain personally the intimate secrets as it says in scripture that we just read the intimate details and secrets uh, of the strategies that you have for us every one of us are going to fulfill your heart's desire for us in this generation we're going to see the glory of the lord and we thank you father by your power and your spirit and there's all kinds of demonic entities leaving right now there's all kinds of things leaving people that that shouldn't have been there and and you've been harassed and it's it's going now in the name of jesus by the blood of jesus christ i break all demonic influence in jesus name i thank you that doors are opening and that that the prosperity is coming in jesus name and the the flow of finances that all debts will be paid and canceled and i thank you father that the doors are opening and that the heavens are already open and i thank you for it in the name of jesus in the name of jesus well god bless you thank you for joining me with this and thank you for being part uh, Pastor uh, Sixto and Susan, we love you in, in Tampa and we all over the world. We love all of you very much at Warrior Notes, but it's time. It's time for us to get with our commander and get our assignment and um, get the details, the intimate details of why we have been created, why we are on the earth right now. And let's just let the Lord use us. And just remember, just as uh, God promised Moses, he said, I'm going to do miracles that no one has ever seen before, before your very eyes. I want you to take hold of that. And you're going to see that in this lifetime. God bless you, Dr. Kevin Zadai. We love you. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye. <coughs> <coughs>